occasionally I'll have someone, I guess, criticize me because my Matrix and my Discord are bridged together. Usually what they'll say is something like, by doing this, you lose any of the privacy benefits you get from using Matrix. Now, the reason why I've done this is because I want to give people options. If they want to use Discord, they can use Discord. If they want to use Matrix, they can use Matrix. But the reason why I've done so isn't really that important. What I want to talk about instead is this weird idea that I've seen some people have that privacy can actually exist in a public chat room. Not even just a public group chat, but in a lot of cases, a group chat in general. Even if this chat is encrypted with the greatest encryption known to man, this encryption is so great that it can literally never be cracked. In a lot of cases, this encryption basically doesn't matter and effectively does not exist. I think there is this, I guess, over-focus on the technical side of privacy. And while things like better encryption, less tracking, and auditable code are all really good things and we should be improving upon the technical side of privacy, one aspect of privacy... I tend to see get completely ignored, and that is the human aspect of privacy. And I feel like this part is as important, if not more important than the technical side, because really, privacy only exists if the people that you're communicating with are actually trustworthy, because I have tools that can break literally any encryption in the entire world. It doesn't matter how good that encryption is, do you know how you can break it? with a screenshot or with a copy and paste. Now that doesn't mean that encryption isn't important in a chat context, but we'll get back to that in just a bit. What I want to talk about first is what encryption is actually good at, because I think this is sort of, I guess, a mismatch of problems. So what encryption is good at is making sure that when you send a data packet from point A to point B, that anyone trying to snoop in on that network can't just go and see exactly what's inside of that. So if I was to send a, I don't know, some unencrypted plain text, anybody looking at that can see exactly what we're sending. But with that being encrypted, they either need to know the keys to decrypt it, or they need to somehow break the encryption. Assuming this encryption is good and actually works, having access to this encrypted data without having the encryption keys is basically useless, and that's the entire point. But if you actually want to use the encrypted data to do something, you first need to decrypt it. So let's say, for example, you have a website, and this website is a shopping site, so you're going to want to be able to take things like credit card information. When the user goes and inputs this information onto the web page, they're going to be doing this in plain text. On their client, it's going to be in plain text. When they want to send it to the web server, that is then going to be encrypted, and then once it gets to the web server, the web server is going to decrypt it and do whatever processing it needs to do on that, I don't know, checking if the credit card is valid, things like that. And then maybe the web server will get some data of its own, do some processing on that, maybe it'll be something like a receipt. Then it will go and encrypt that, send it back to the user, and this will continue back and forth until the transaction is over. And for shopping, this system works quite well, because there is one party on both sides, and it is in both their best interest to make sure the private information isn't made public. So in the case of the credit card information, no regular person wants to put their credit card information out there. In the case of the business, if they go and start releasing credit card information, that will be really, really bad for their reputation. But this is where problems start to arise with the group chat. So someone in the chat is going to write a message or send a video or send an image, something like that. And that is going to be encrypted and then sent to all of the individual clients connected to that chat. Then those clients are going to decrypt that information and have a unencrypted version of that message. Now, anytime that data is decrypted, this should be done in a safe location, otherwise it becomes a potential privacy and security risk, and the amount of encryptions and decryptions along a chain should be as minimal as possible, preferably only one encryption and only one decryption, so from point A to point B. If, for example, you're sending a message from point A to point B, and there is a server in the middle that decrypts and then re-encrypts it, you can probably assume that something weird is happening on that server. For example, I don't know, remember the Zoom situation where they were sending out private keys from the central server? 
but in a good encrypted chat, it's going to be encrypted by the client who sent the message, and then this message is going to be sent out to everyone else in the chat. Now, in a one-on-one -on -one chat, this might be perfectly fine. If you trust the person in that chat, it's very similar to the shopping situation, but every time that you add a new user into this chat, it becomes much, much harder to trust the chat as a collective entity. For a private chat, this is at least somewhat maintainable. You can vet the people who enter the chat and hopefully minimize the chances of data being leaked, but ultimately, there's no way to really stop it. But what about with a public chat? Well, this is where any level of encryption basically falls apart. If you have data being unencrypted on unknown clients, there is no way to trust any of the members in that chat. Because any single member in that chat could go to somewhere like GitHub, download a bot for scraping that chat, and scrape every single message in that chat in a completely unencrypted form. Even though when that data was being sent, it was encrypted, because it needs to be unencrypted on the chat client, the encryption effectively does not exist anymore. And that leads us into the question of how do we actually fix this? And from the technology side, I don't think there is a way to fix this because encryption is kind of inherently flawed for doing communication. Let's say you had a chat client that was basically malware that stopped you from doing things like copy and pasting and screenshots while the client was actually running. Well, now I can just pick up my phone and record my screen. Or if it's something that has an open protocol, well, now you can make a new client that doesn't have those problems. And I think that we're completely missing the point of this if we're trying to solve this with technology, because this isn't a technology problem. I don't think that truly private encrypted conversations can actually be done. The only way to even get close to this is knowing who you can actually trust, but even then, you cannot fully trust that any person is not going to find a reason to leak whatever you say. I think you're much better off having any of these proper private conversations in person, in a place that doesn't have any recording information, if it needs to actually be private, it should not be done over any form of technology. Whether that be nuclear launch codes or Grand Theft Auto San Andreas cheat codes, if it's something you actually want to be properly private, just because you think the chat is encrypted and you think it is safe, just remember that I can screenshot it. Now, maybe you disagree with me and you think I am completely wrong. If that is the case, I really, really do want to hear why. I've been thinking about this problem for quite a while, and I really cannot see a way that encryption can actually make a chat properly private. Yes, it will stop, I guess, companies trying to harvest data as easily from their central server, but ultimately, it's still not a private conversation if anyone in that chat can very easily leak that information. And it's not like, you know, group chats haven't been leaked in the past before. So unless someone has a better solution, I don't think there's really a way this can actually be done. That's going to be it for me. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please do go check out my Patreon subscribe, Sully Berapay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I play games twice a week and upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.